All right, so here's the deal. Uh, I have this awesome dog named Cricket. She's a rescue. She has a little bit of a checkered past. Uh, we don't know much about her past past, um, but she loves hard. She's super great. Um, but she has a dog bed. And this little dog bed we got for her when we rescued her 10 years ago? Nine years ago, somewhere in there. Um, she's about 12 years old, we think. Um, and so we had her since she was like two. But we got this little dog bed and it is just a scrap of fabric now, basically, and she's worn it all to pieces. And it's her favorite thing in the world. And I'm gonna replace it. So uh, we're doing some home changing renovation stuff right now and I thought it'd be great uh, to make a new dog bed at the impetus of my wife asking me to. So not my idea, hers. Um, so gonna make a mid-century modern, like dovetailed dog bed. So um, I have some walnut that I've been seasoning for years, um, large pieces of it. And so this is the off cut of one of them. It is a giant log and I actually traded this log um, for a fine art print. And uh, it was 13 feet tall. It's like uh, 23 inches across. Anyhow, uh, I split it up, milled it up, and this morning uh, I took some of the chunks and milled them down into proper pieces. So I'll put some pictures in here, a little slideshow, and I'll show you Cricket there somewhere. And, um, or here. And, uh, but yeah, so we'll get this running. So I thought I might just share it with y'all. So we're gonna get to uh, working from where I am, where I have boards, but remember those boards were hand cut from uh, big chunks of wood. So let's get cutting on uh, making a dog bed. All right, so first things first, I have my boards cut to rough size and rough thickness. Um, and so now, out of that big log that you just saw pictures of and stuff, um, and so now I need to do a few things. First off, I'm gonna surface plane these um, with a hand plane to make sure that they're nice and crisp and all of the machine marks are off of them. Um, even though they're subtle, I want those to go away on all edges. And then the second thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut them to final length and then shoot them on a shooting board, uh, which is gonna make this a perfect 90 degree angle so that I can start the dovetailing process, which is one of my favorites. So, uh, let's get to some hand planing. All right, I have a weird little setup. Right now I have just a stop block set up here because normally where I do all my hand planing on that Moravian bench is a wreck. So, just gonna do it here. If you know anything about me, I have a love affinity for hand planes. So, this is a uh, vintage Stanley number no. four smoothing plane that I restored, and we're gonna go ahead and uh, get this thing smoothed up. Now, one of the reasons I'm doing this is that I have a helical cutter on my planer and my joiner, so it'll scallop this very subtly. And so if I don't plane these off, I'll get little waves in the final finish. So I wanna make sure that this is uh, nice and smooth. All right, as we move on to the next step, I'll explain what this tool is. This is a shooting plane, if you're not familiar with one. And most shooting boards don't look like this. They're normally flat. Um, but years and years ago, uh, there was a great article called It's Hip to be Square. Um, and it was about angled shooting boards. And I bought all in and made myself a little mini uh, angled shooting board. And so the way that this works is that we will saw our lumber or a board here to the right size, very close to my line. And then I will sit like this and this hand plane runs along and cuts the end grain. And because of the, the ramp, 
it acts as a shearing cut. When I first made this board, I used to use a Stanley number five in this little trough, and that way it made it like a shooting plane, right? So that it actually had a shearing cut instead of a blunt edge kind of cut on the end grain. Um, most shooting planes, this is a Veritas shooting plane, they already have a skew on the iron, right? So this actually kind of double does it for me. Uh, it just has a simple bitch hook that pushes up against my bench. And so all the force forward cuts this way. So when you see me doing this, that's what we're doing is using this shooting board to make my ends nice and square, ready for dovetails. Now, also, funny thing about my shooting, uh, my shooting board here, you notice little images here. Before I was a woodworker, long time ago, I was a printmaker. And I used to make all sorts of prints. And this is from a process called Mocolito, which is a wood printing mixed with lithography. And um, I dug deep and pulled out. This was actually the fine art print that I traded for that log. This was one of them. It has an image of bees in the background and a Ferris wheel and this young little soldier from the Civil War. Um, this was a really interesting print because it's both of my, uh, my wife and I's biggest fears and us trying to combat them. Uh, she's terrified of bees. I'm absolutely terrified of Ferris wheels. So this little guy is uh, us trying to overcome those things. So anyhow, uh, we'll get to cutting these out and shooting. I'll go till I get one solid shaving. So I just have a little left to do. Once I shoot this edge, I can now measure my distance and do the other side. And there's our little ingrain shavings. Here's my basic, basic layout, size of dog bed. I'm gonna cut a little sloop, lash little thing here in the front. I might even do it off center. Don't think so. Probably just do it all the way over. Um, and the cushion will fit inside here and then I need to build a bottom and build some legs. So we're basically done. Um, not really, of course. So I need to dovetail these into these. So I'm gonna go through the process of dovetailing. Um, I've thought about starting a Patreon a number of times and if you think that's a good idea leave a comment below um, if you want to learn some of these skills whether it's hand tool woodworking whether it's anything i have this whole host of ideas um, but i haven't put it into practice yet and so i'm going to kind of you can watch me do this but if you want to learn how to do this 
I can actually do some summer projects or anything else. Um, so I'm gonna get to making this. You can hear some banjo. I'm assuming that's what I'll put here, but let's get to work. So, first step is I'm gonna mark all of my mark my lines here for the depth of my pins and tails. I'm just gonna do through tails, no half blinds or anything else like that. Um, and so next, I need to lay out my actual dovetails. I'm gonna do that with one of my dovetail markers that I make. Um, so I'll lay these out to where I'm excited about them and uh, start cutting them out. So before I glue up all this stuff, I've got my joints cleaned up. I need to cut the little swoop that's in here because it'll be way easier to do now while this is a board and before it's part of something. So let me draw that out, cut it, and then we'll uh, glue it up. I'm trying to see if I can get this in the light. I was trying to turn if I want to do like a little S curve or like a straight line. And I think with the aesthetics of this, I'm going to go with the straight line versus a little S curve kind of thing. Thank <laughs> you. 